sponsors of this entire lecture series, uh, which is Points East Magazine, as well as uh, Cisco Brewers and Triple Eight Distilleries. Um, I also wish to thank Tom's Market uh, for the food tonight, which is exceptional. Don't get your hopes up. This is something special <laughs> for the lecture series. But there's plenty of it, so feel free to eat it. Tonight's lecture is uh, a departure from the usual yacht business that we so often hear about. And tonight, uh, the Harrisoft Torpedo Boats, uh, a lecture titled Innovation at the Beginning of the Modern U.S. Navy. Um, and to make the introductions of this very special lecture, I'd like now to call on Halsey Harrisoft uh, to not only uh, uh, give us uh, a brief, some brief remarks about Carlton Pinero uh, and Leanne, welcome, uh, but also uh, to introduce John. Halsey? Thank you very much, Dyer, and thank you for so ably uh, energizing the uh, series of lectures that we now have. And I think that uh, many of you have attended previously Carlton Pinero lectures because of the many uh, programs that we put on through the year. The penultimate one is the Carlton J. Pinero uh, lecture, and we always make sure to get an especially good speaker for that. This was instituted um, very shortly after the passing of our beloved curator, Carlton Pinero, now about 12 years ago, uh, with the strong encouragement of his widow, Leanne Pinero, and especially with the very wonderful support of uh, Gail and Patrick Connolly, who are here. And of all the sponsors, they're the ones that really made this happen. Not only did they uh, set up an endowment for these College of Pinero lectures, but they also set up another endowment for scholarships that the museum provides every year for a uh, outstanding student to uh, go and study. So I think we ought to give a round of applause to Pat and Dale Conley over right now. treat this evening because, um, as Dyer mentioned, the uh, recognition of the great heroes of tradition is more about sailing boats and about the America's Cup. And the signal accomplishments of J.B. and Nat Harrisov serving the United States Navy is not very well known. And that began way back uh, in the last uh, third of the uh, 1800s and continued up until uh, and a little beyond 1900. And they uh, designed and built some very wonderful <coughs> craft, which John will describe, and he's probably prepared for this lecture more than anybody's ever prepared for a lecture here because uh, he and uh, colleagues have visited uh, a university down in Texas and done all kinds of research to uh, delineate how this service of the Herosoft to the Navy came about. The thing that's so remarkable about it is that the Navy at that early beginning really didn't have uh, much of anything in the way of small powered vessels. And uh, they all took some uh, understanding of that from the uh, good vessels in England. But it was the Herosoft who first built the earliest torpedo boats and built uh, a wonderful craft like the uh, Cushing, for which there's a model right in front of the uh, mural back of you. And uh, these were craft that were completely designed here by Nat herself. And even more remarkable, he designed and built the machinery, the boilers and engines. And uh, John is uh, incredibly well qualified to describe this because not only is he a wonderful curator at the museum here, has been so ever since uh, Carlton's passing, but he also was a Navy captain in charge of a shipyard with 7,000 employees, and he's been on the other side of the negotiations dealing with uh, uh, designers and builders of vessels, and so I think he has an especially great appreciation 
of the uh, side of the designers and builders. And just one further word about John Palmieri. This museum has been so blessed for more than two decades to have the finest curators you could ever imagine. First cousin, Pinero, who was a great friend of our family and my brother. And uh, he was an incredible researcher, author, brought about some great books that um, are able to carry forward the tradition and information about it that is nowhere else. And he's been followed by uh, John Palmieri, who exhibits the same uh, utter fascination with the history, but also the great care to learn about the history and only put out facts that are correct. I remember one time years ago, I was in the US. Well, the reason I say that is I remember one time years ago, I was interviewed by Walter Cronkite involved with uh, his uh, reporting of the America's Cup. And uh, we all came back from sailing, and Walter looked pretty tired. But uh, as soon as the interview started, he snapped right out of it, and he asked me a bunch of questions, and I told him a lot. And I thought it went pretty well. And so when it was over, I getting the microphone off now, and I said to Walter, I said, well, Walter, was that all right? He said, oh, yes, it was fine. He said, very interesting, and uh, if it's true, it'll be even better. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a man that's always true, and it's my honor to introduce to you the uh, curator of this museum. Thank you, Halsey. Uh, just a few comments. The, the video that you've been watching that we're, uh, is a, uh, for, uh, were, were movies taken by Thomas Edison in the May of 1890, and, or 1900, and it is of the torpedo boat Morris here in Narragansett Bay uh, firing torpedoes. Torpedo boat Morris was torpedo boat number 14 built by the Harris House, one of the last boats they built. The, uh, what, uh, I'll get started. You know, when the, uh, when Lee surrendered to Grant at Appomattox, the, uh, the U.S. Navy had over 450 vessels. One year later, there were 200 less. And what followed was 20 years of neglect. And by 1885, there were less than 50 vessels in the U.S. Navy, and the U.S. Navy had lost most of its technical capability. And that was the environment in which the Harrisoff Manufacturing Company and the two Harrisoff brothers introduced innovation into what at that time was called the new U.S. Navy. And so that's what we'll be talking about today. In, uh, from 1868 to 1897, the Harris built 180 steam vessels, of which about 70% were, uh, were for private and commercial use, the steam launches and steam yachts. And 30% were for government service of various types, mostly launches, and eight of them were torpedo boats. Now, the, the story of the, of, the, of the torpedo boats up until today has been that basically that the Harrisoff, the technology applied in torpedo boats came from, their, from the private boats they built, the launches and yachts, and they adapted that technology into torpedo boats. And then what happened was that the Harrisoff chafed under the supervision of Navy inspectors here at the plant, who they thought were much less competent than they, in building steam vessels and torpedo vessels, and therefore they left the business. Now that's the story we've told around here for a number of years. In 2009 and 10, I gave several lectures on that story, and, and it turns out, based upon new research, that that story is overly simplistic and in many areas just plain wrong. So the purpose today, so my facts were not facts, <laughs> Halsey, I'm sorry to say, they were, they were guesses. So what we're talking about today is based upon new research. This research is incomplete. You know, we're, re this is, we're rediscovering history. You know, this is just my best version right now of where we think things stand, and there could be some changes tomorrow.